Oh, hey, yo, you guys, it's Splatter Colors, and welcome back. Wow, you guys absolutely blew up my last video. Way more than I was expecting. And you had a lot to say about it. If you're new here and haven't seen my last video, definitely go check that out first. I discuss my original concept design on the mysterious deity carving and why I drew it the way I did. Anyway, I loved your theories so much, I wanted to make a follow-up video incorporating your ideas. So let's get started. One of the first comments we got was from Mad G. Mad G said the deity is going to look more otherworldly. Compared to how the Lord of the Mountain looks in the Blue Bees, they may have a more humanoid form, but takes the current otherworldly form, and goes on to connect this otherworldly form to the curse looming over Hyrule and Link. First of all, I love when characters transform later in the plot, just like how Minna transforms at the end of Twilight Princess when Zan's curse is lifted. I kind of mentioned the bloopy ears during my last video, but I had dismissed it due to the lack of appendages on the ears of the carving. Another detail that both the Lord of the Mountain and the Bloopies have are their owl-like faces. Looking back at the carving, I think an owl-like face is very plausible. The Zelda series has been known for using owls before, from the Owl in Link's Awakening to the infamous Kapora Gabora in Ocarina of Time. Kapora's design has a face inversion effect, and when he rotates his head 180 degrees, you can see an entirely different face. After flipping Hylia's carving, I noticed a similar pattern. I hadn't noticed this before, but this 100% gives more substance to Mad G's theory of her being more otherworldly like the Lord of the Mountain. Regardless, I still think this would be an amazing design on its own. So I kept the body mostly the same, but changed the face and added some wings. While drawing this, I realized it's giving me strong Wan Shitong vibes from Avatar The Last Airbender, and I'm okay with that. I added the wings even though the carving doesn't hint at anything of the sort, but if this is Hylia, she has been depicted with wings in her goddess statues in-game before. Finishing this up, I think this would make an amazing deity to have in-game, especially if we get a more humanoid transformation while playing Tears of the Kingdom. Thanks Mad G for the awesome theory and let's move on to the next design. Our next comments come from Zach Langa and MC. Both these guys kind of had a similar feel going on, so I decided to combine them into one theory. Zach points out that she's a snake-like creature and MC points out that she could be some kind of dragon. Dragons are a reoccurring theme and common character design in the Zelda series, so a dragon-like creature certainly isn't out of the question. Even the Tears of the Kingdom logo has two serpents, so I decided to pull some references from Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild dragons. In Tears of the Kingdom, it's the same world as Breath of the Wild. At least, that's what we've been led to believe so far. The three dragons of Skyward Sword, Farin, Lanayru, and Elden directly correlate to their namesakes of the Golden Goddesses. The same thing goes for the dragons that make an appearance in Breath of the Wild. The dragons from Skyward Sword are a great reference to pull for this design theory. Notice how the Skyward Sword dragons have the same kind of curvature on their brow bone extending down towards the nose that our carving has. The three dragons even have an insignia on their foreheads in tune with their regions. The carving also has this arch shaped in a similar location, although I'm not sure what this could be representing. Maybe a new horizon or floating islands? Let me know in the comments if you have any theories on this strange shape. Anyway, since their cranium has so many consistencies to the Skyward Sword dragons, I brought over their spiky head shape into our design as well. The body also takes after the dragons in Skyward Sword, as they have a more humanoid figure but with long neck and extended serpent's tail. Zach correctly points out that this could be the reason for the two necklaces in the carving and why the deity is depicted with an abnormally sized neck. I also tried to line up some of the designs on Lene Rue's stomach and tail to the intricate carvings we see on the deity. Rather than the layers of fabric I thought these lines could be from my original theory, it could also be tattoos or body modifications, like we see on Lene Rue. I still wanted to incorporate more of the dragons from Breath of the Wild into our drawing. I decided to bring over the mane we see these three dragons have into our design rather than the flowing golden hair we had before. I think this could make a lot of sense given the carving clearly has long, unruly hair of some sort. Moving on to the ears, we can also take the shape and size of the Breath of the Wild dragons. 
This shape definitely lines up a lot better with the original carving, so I'll also be carrying over this design element into our drawing. I've also taken from the dragon's eyes, carrying over the color, shape, and eyelashes, which are consistent with the carving. I've kept the same arms from our original and made the entire body to match the glowing arms as well. I believe this figure would still be covered in armor and jewelry as they are a god and it goes well with the spirit arm we've kept in the design. I'll be honest, this design is a bit of nightmare fuel, and it's probably the most drastic change to my original design theory. I have a bit of phobia of snakes, so if you appreciate me overcoming my fear and drawing a snake-like creature anyway, please consider subscribing. All in all, this would still make a really sick looking deity in game, especially if we can see it flying around the sky islands with us. The last comment we got was from SoCal KNF. SoCal brings up an urban legend within the Zelda series, citing the NPC in Ocarina of Time who tells Link that Hylians have long ears so that they can hear the whispers of the gods. In my original design theory, I used this to back up my idea that of course Hylia would have long ears. But this theory suggests that this can't be a god, since why would god needs to hear themselves? I've seen a few people in the comments suggesting this is a Twilight or Zonai queen, and not a god. This commenter also suggests that this figure is opposite of Hylia, someone from a dark world or realm. It would make sense the way it shows Zelda and the figure clasping hands from opposite sides of the frame, and goes on to mention how the two tear shapes above them are mirrored, implying they are opposites to each other. The mirrored imagery to Zelda makes me think of two characters from the Zelda series that we've seen before, Princess Hilda of Lorul from Link Between Worlds and Midna from Twilight Princess. I mentioned this in my original video, but we see a lot of ties between Zonai symbolism and the Twilight Realm. Assuming this character is a queen of one of those realms, we can redesign the character. Inspired by Minna's character design, we can implement a few changes. I decided to change the style of clothing to a skirt with slits at either side, aligning well with the carving and its long loincloth shape in the center. I've also interpreted the carving's details on the legs to be more Zonai armor, like the spirit arm. Minna also sports a painted on top with swirl designs, so I incorporated this into our new design while trying to line up the carving swirls and etches. We've replaced the armored plate on her forehead for a hood with Zonai designs, much like Minna's. I switched out the skirt and hood's inner fabric color for purple to match the purple colors that Hilda has in her character design. I was unable to find reference to Minna's human form ear shape, so instead stole the shape from her inner form. I replaced the two necklaces to be a structure that more closely aligns with the Twilight and Zonai people. I've kept the hair long and the hair-like appendages from our original design, but I have made them redder like Mid does. Finishing up this design, I add a few of the etchings we see in the carving to her clothing to get our final design. A dark Zonai queen in the new Zelda game would be such a cool counterpart to Zelda. I personally love this theory, so thanks so much for sharing your theory, SoCal. So what do you guys think of these new designs? Do you agree with them? Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. And thanks to everyone who commented your ideas. They were all amazing to read. I can't believe everyone who commented and subscribed. We hit 100 subscribers last video, which I definitely wasn't expecting. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.